Hi, I'm Brent Stafford and this is RegWatch by RegulatorWatch.com. Comprehensive and definitive, two words which best describe a groundbreaking report on e-cigarettes just released by the Royal College of Physicians in Britain. In a paradigm shift for public health officials, the report prioritizes the needs of smokers trying to quit over the misconceived threats of vaping. The Globe and Mail calls the RCP report a ringing endorsement of e-cigarettes that delivers a stinging rebuke to public health officials who take an absolutist and moralist stand against vaping. That viewpoint is soundly rejected by the Royal College of Physicians, which represents over 32,000 doctors and is one of the most prestigious professional organizations in Western medicine. In its 200-page report titled Nicotine Without Smoke, the RCP makes some sweeping conclusions, including that nicotine alone is not carcinogenic, and compared to continued smoking, nicotine use in e-cigarettes is of minimal consequence. The report also states there is no evidence that e-cigarette use has resulted in the renormalization of smoking, or that vaping serves as a gateway for never smokers, including young people, to pick up the habit. The report's authors emphatically convey that the risks of vaping are small and the benefits are great, and urgently call on regulators to safeguard e-cigarettes as a valuable tool in the battle against smoking. The RCP recommends that while regulatory restrictions must safeguard against hazard, they must also be proportionate so as to not unnecessarily inhibit the development, availability and use of e-cigarettes. Regulation of e-cigarettes should also ensure products that deliver nicotine do so in doses smokers would find satisfying in order to encourage making the switch from smoked tobacco, which the report says should be promoted widely. Finally, the authors say it is vital that non-tobacco nicotine products be excluded from tobacco taxes. It's hard to overstate the impact this report could have on the regulatory debate in Canada, or it could be dismissed as was the report last summer from Public Health England, which found that vaping is 95% safer than smoking. That was done by a small group of experts who were using their best guess as to how less harmful it was. It, it wasn't really a scientific process. It was individuals, a group of individuals, getting together with David Nutt, who's um, a, a, a good psychiatrist and good on substance abuse, but it was their best guess. Joining us today is John Britton, the chair of the Tobacco Advisory Group at the Royal College of Physicians in Britain and professor of epidemiology at the University of Nottingham. Professor Britton, thanks for coming on the show. You were responsible for bringing together and editing all of the contributions into the RCP report, which sounds like a ringing endorsement for e-cigarettes and their potential to save lives. E-cigarettes can certainly save lives. We In Britain, we have nearly 9 million smokers, and we know that half of those, 4.5 million people alive today in one country, will die prematurely as a consequence of their habit unless they quit. And we also know that quitting is extremely difficult. So while we would like everybody just to stop smoking, it's hard, it doesn't happen. So electronic cigarettes can substitute for tobacco in a proportion of those. At the moment, the proportion is low. It's probably single figure percentage of smokers who are have moved exclusively to electronic cigarettes. But as the products improve and with endorsement and support, I don't see why that couldn't be 50% or 70% or even more. And if that's the case, that these products have the potential to save millions of lives in one country. They are potentially huge. Wow, Professor Britton, that's strong endorsement for e-cigarettes. Does the RCP report represent a definitive statement on behalf of doctors in the UK? It's a definitive message from the Royal College of Physicians. The Royal College of Physicians has been in existence for 500 years or more. and. Uh, yeah, it, it speaks on behalf of the profession in the UK. So the report itself was produced for the college by a, a group of us, but has been reviewed and approved by the College Council. So it's, it's a report by that organisation. So it's a fairly strong opinion. Uh, but of course, there's a mixture of views held in the UK, just as there are in Canada and everywhere else in the world. A mixture of views, that's a polite way to describe the controversy. Professor Britton, there's certain to be detractors who will try to dismiss the report straight out of hand. Well, I don't think that uh, the report should be so easily dismissed. The report's about the science of electronic cigarettes. It's not about the politics or about 
who's right and who's wrong. It's just about the science. And it's an extensive review of the evidence that's out there, done by people who are expert in the area, and signed off by the Royal College of Physicians through its council of 40 or so you know, representatives. So it's not a small piece of work. And I don't think it can be written off as just the views of one person, for example. So those kinds of criticisms will always be made. But this is an emphatic report and it tries to say, are these products helping or hindering? What are the risks and how important are those risks now and likely to be for the future? And the evidence so far in the UK is that the risks are small and the benefits are great. Professor Britton, you say the risks are small, but a big concern we hear a lot about is nicotine addiction. Um, nicotine is the main reason why smokers smoke. It's not a particularly pleasurable drug, but once you've used it for a while, it's very much reinforcing and very difficult to break away from. And many authorities will now accept that nicotine itself is not particularly hazardous. It raises blood pressure, it puts your heart rate up, it may improve you know, fine uh, coordination, concentration perhaps, certainly in people who are in nicotine withdrawal, but it doesn't do a great deal that's too positive and it doesn't do a great deal that's very negative either. So if we were all addicted to nicotine, the health consequences would probably be similar to those that arise from us all being addicted to caffeine. Well, another concern often voiced is that e-cigarettes could renormalize smoking. Is that a danger? It's normalizing electronic cigarette use. And so for the many people who are itching for a cigarette, this is seen as an alternative which helps deal with the problem. So that cuts both ways. In this, in this country, we see no evidence of that renormalization argument. And what about the children, Professor Britton? There's certainly a lot of worry over young people experimenting with e-cigarettes. The fact is that young people uh, experiment with things. That's, that's part of growing up. So the concern that people might become addicted to electronic cigarettes and then move on to tobacco is a real one and something that everybody is worried by. The evidence that we have in the UK, and to my mind, with almost only, well, very few exceptions around the world, is that young people who experiment with electronic cigarettes, by and large, do so once or twice, realize there's no big deal to it, and stop. Professor Burton, what stance does the college take when it comes to regulating e-cigarette products? The products certainly do need to be regulated. When somebody goes out and buys one of these devices, they need to know it's going to deliver nicotine for them. Most smokers in Britain, anyway, are poor. And so to go out and spend a lot of money on one of these pieces of kit is a big deal. So I treat patients and will say, have you tried electronic cigarette? And they will. sometimes people will say, yeah, it didn't work. And I don't know whether that's just because it's wrong for them or because they bought a dud because they were trying to save money. So we need to know that the devices on the market deliver nicotine. And we need to know that whatever's in the vapor has to be there or is at levels that are so low as to not matter. Finally, Professor Britton, what do you hope will be the outcome of the RCP report? Well, I hope that in Britain it will help uh, doctors and other health professionals who are uncertain about the role of electronic cigarettes to feel confident in recommending them. That's the key thing. For the ordinary everyday person just doing their job and trying to advise smokers and help as many smokers as possible to quit, I hope that this report will say these products are helpful, use them. Well, that's it for this edition of RegWatch. Before you head off, please like us on Facebook and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. For RegulatorWatch.com, I'm Brent Stafford.